Hi, I'm Michael Carper, and welcome to Live Tweeting and Buzzer Beating, my Power BI demo about Twitter and NBA games. Like everyone else from Indiana, I've been closely following the Pacers, as they maintain the best record in the league. But I have to admit that when I watch games, I spend half the time glued to my phone. That's because I love reading tweets about the game, a phenomenon known as live tweeting. I've been wondering lately about the contours of live tweeting. In a particular game, where are tweets coming from? When are people tweeting the most? Do certain teams get more tweets? And is there some correlation between who gets more tweets and who wins? So I'll need to use the Twitter stream to collect my tweets. Unfortunately, you can't connect to the API with just a URL, in which case I can skip straight to Power Query. Luckily, 140Dev, a site dedicated to Twitter programming, provides a free set of PHP scripts that you can use to easily access the Twitter firehose and store the tweets in a MySQL database. I set up a basic server that searched for tweets mentioning an NBA team and collected a few million in a weekend. Then I'm ready to start in Excel. One of the things I like most about Power Query is that it brings a whole host of new native connection types, like MySQL. So I'll go to the Power Query tab, click From Database, select MySQL, and input my connection information. I can see my tweets table listed in the side navigator. Now, another great thing about Power Query is that you can use it to shape your data before loading it with an easy-to-use graphical interface. So I'll click Edit Query. In the editing window, I'm first going to remove some unneeded columns, like the unparsed tweet string and a few others. Then I'm going to filter my data, excluding tweets which mention more than one team. There are also some dates in my tweet collection which don't have any games, so there's no point in including them. Power Query gives me built-in date filters, so I can easily select a start and end date without any complicated logic. I can rename columns to make them more business friendly, from geo lat and geo long to latitude and longitude. And as you can see, each step is tracked in the applied steps window, so I can easily go back and readjust my settings. Finally, I'm going to adjust my load settings. I don't want it to load directly into the worksheet yet, so I'm only going to select load to data model. Then Excel loads the query. After about a minute, more than a million rows have been loaded into Excel's in-memory data model. Not bad. Now let's say that an IT department provides the Twitter data and a business analyst actually creates the dashboard. We can share this original query within our organization. Others can access it with all the data source settings, filters, and changes already applied. Let's start a new workbook then. The analyst can easily access the data through Power Query's online search functionality which searches both public data sets and those inside your organization. So I'll click Edit Query and then select Load to Data Model. Once it's loaded, I'll need to add one more source of data, the NBA schedule. I've already got a file with the schedule, which I'll pull from using Power Query again. The little preview tells me I've got the right file. I'll edit the query and make sure that it detects my first rows as headers. Then. I'll load the data model. Now we're ready to relate the two data sources together in Power Pivot. I'll go to Manage My Data Model and can see my tweet collection table. I'm going to add a calculated field that combines the team mentioned with the date, called Team ID. In the Schedule table, I'll add the same Team ID field, plus another field which combines both teams and the date, called Game ID. Then I'll go to Diagram View and join the two tables with Team ID. Now I can flag tweets that took place during a game. So I'll go to my tweets table and create a calculation that tells me how much time elapsed in minutes between the time of the tweet and the start of the game. To do this, I reference the related field in the NBA schedule table. Negative values are before the game start time, positive values are after it, and huge numbers like the ones you see on the screen have no related game. They subtracted zero from the time of the tweet. Then I'll create another column that gives me a yes-no flag if the value is between negative 60 and 240, which should include pre- and post-game chatter. Now it's time to start my dashboard. I'll start up PowerView and see my two queries. I'll go to Schedule, check Game ID to add it as a dimension, and check Tweet ID to add a count of them. I'll change it to a column chart, and then drag Game Flag to the filter view to include tweets from game days only. So we've already got a very clean chart. I don't have to fiddle with the legends or access. PowerView makes a smart choice for me. It even adds a chart title based on the dimensions used. 
Let's see if we can answer one of my questions. I'll drag outcome to my existing chart, which colors the bars based on winner and loser. It looks like winners have more tweets. To confirm, I'll create a new pie chart for all the games. Yes, it does appear that winning teams, on the whole, collect more tweets. As you can see, PowerView is keeping my color scheme consistent across the different charts, so it's easy to associate the data. Let's investigate our second question. During the game, when are people tweeting? We'll make a line graph of the tweet ID count over the minutes to the game time. There's a definite spike of people during the game, but this graph is a little messy. Luckily, I created another column in Power Pivot that rounded the minutes up to multiples of 5. This gives us a clearer picture. Tweeting seems to reach its apex during halftime. It seems to spike again when the game ends. Let's confirm this by filtering to a single game. On the Pacers vs. Nets game on December 28th, there's an obvious spike at the end. If we add team to the line graph, we can see that as the Pacers confirm their victory, tweets about them soared, even if, overall, the number of tweets was close. Another way that I can look at individual games is by adding a tile. This is a nice way to navigate through a dimension without seeing every value at the same time. PowerView boasts native mapping software I can use to map geocoded tweets. I'll add tweet ID count as my measure, and then the latitude and longitude fields. I'll filter out tweets with no games, or tweets without a location. I'll also turn off aggregation for latitude and longitude. I'll add the map, use the tile to select the Pacers vs. Nets, and then drag latitude and longitude to the location field. Finally, I'll change my color based on the team. Voila! Tweets appear on my Bing map. As you can see, Indiana doesn't seem to be pulling its weight when it comes to live tweeting. Brooklyn did beat us there. But maybe this map isn't cutting it for you. Maybe you want something a little more snazzy. With PowerMap, we can build a stunning 3D view of our data with a few easy steps. This power map scene shows us the location of tweets about the Pacers vs. Nets game, animated as the night progressed. Let's see that again. Look at the burst of activity when it hits 8 o'clock. Once the dashboard is done, it's time to publish to our Power BI site. This is the Power BI landing page. It shows all the Excel dashboards we've uploaded to SharePoint. Let's upload ours. Using the Excel web app that's part of Office 365, we can view and interact with our dashboard, just as we would in the normal Excel program, applying filters and slices. A great way to share your dashboard and drive its adoption is the Q&A feature. A user, whether it be another analyst or a completely non-technical role, can launch it from the Power BI site and start asking questions. As you add terms and aggregations to the search box, Power BI pulls the appropriate data and displays the results right there in the window, with the same kind of charts as a normal Excel file. Power BI makes a smart guess that we want to sort by tweet count and show outcome with the color. This graph should show a correlation between tweet count and winning, as I asserted earlier. But as you can see, for the most part, teams with more tweets didn't necessarily win. Teams with losses are evenly spaced in the tweet count ranking. It's really only the first two teams that give any sort of correlation. The Magic and the Heat blow the others out of the water by a factor of two or more but that may be due to the team's national presence or their larger TV market. In fact, it was these two teams that made our correlation appear convincing in our original dashboard, which goes to show that data visualization is no silver bullet. Certain charts can seem to make points that aren't really so. In this case, the end user might respond to the original dashboard creator and say, hey, you need to make that first chart clearer. And what a great report life cycle this is. Instead of a canned report from the IT department that just sits in your inbox, Power BI dashboards are made and delivered in the business-friendly environment of Excel. And those end users can not only interact with and edit the dashboard, but draw new insights from it in ways the original creator may not have imagined. This has been Live Tweeting and Buzzer Beating, a Power BI demo about Twitter and the NBA. I hope you learned something about Power BI, and I look forward to reading and analyzing your tweets.